Um, so I don't forget that. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to grow your newsletter faster with Facebook ads. And before we dive into that very specific topic, um, let me first introduce myself real quick. Um, my name is Boitza. Um, try to like how to remember the pronunciation. Um, my friend once said that it's a combination of moist and pizza, which sounds disgusting, but it's a, it's a good way to remember how to pronounce it. Um, I'm the founder of a boutique agency called Super Spicy Media. Uh, I'm actually from Slovenia, but I work with international clients. I do Facebook ad strategy and management um, and typically work with multi-million dollar companies. So a couple of clients that I worked with include ConvertKit, Egghead, Kickoff Labs, uh, double your freelancing. And I put the big cat rescue in there, uh, just as a fun fact. And it is actually uh, true. I worked with uh, big cat rescue, helping them establish a Facebook advertising strategy. Um, so, and, um, for, for every other thing, I also teach people how to use Facebook ads. So it's not just the multi-million dollar companies, but I also try to cater to small business owners. I have an ebook called the Facebook ads manual. Um, and I have a course, a video course, um, called the science of Facebook ads, where we really dive into Facebook advertising and targeting and everything. So first, the, the first slide or the third slide actually is pretty much on brand. Um, I'm, a car fanatic. Um, I love cars. So I try to incorporate that into the third slide, uh, to make it more fun, um, where I would just like to convince you and answer the question, why Facebook ads, um, especially for newsletter. So why would you even run Facebook ads for your newsletter? So, um, I would typically ask you like if a, if a bigger and more engaging email list is the destination, which car do you take? And on the left side, you have like a boxy red car, which I mean, it looks like it's pretty slow. Um, and that is typically your newsletter growth without Facebook ads. Um, but on the, on the right side, you have like a sleek, sporty Porsche, which is like a vintage, vintage, uh, example, still faster car. Um, and that is your newsletter growth with Facebook ads. So essentially what Facebook ads do is first of all, they help you grow your newsletter past the current audience limitation. So if you're not running ads, if you're only rely on, let's say organic traction on organic traffic, maybe a little bit of sharing along the way, um, that's perfect. Uh, and if it's going well, it's great. However, when you use Facebook ads, you supercharge that kind of growth because you're not limited to that organic or organic traction, which has some sort of a cap, uh, with Facebook ads that is supercharged. Um, Facebook ads also help you determine which audience is most engaging. So if you set up Facebook advertising correctly, if you use tracking parameters, which we are going to talk about today, um, that allows you to determine what audience is the one that not just signs up at a very effective rate, but also engages with your email list, with your emails, um, what you send out. Um, and essentially what Facebook ads can also do is they can help you tone, hone in the tone that you should be using with your audience because Facebook advertising allows for a lot of AB testing to be done where you can experiment with different, um, like I said, different tones, different words, word combinations, and essentially see what's the, let's say word combination, what's the tone that resonates with your target audience, something that you also can do with your, uh, email list, but not at a scale, um, that you can deal with Facebook ads. The question that I typically get next is aren't Facebook ads just for e-commerce? Um, because that's the Facebook ads that you typically see in your Facebook advertising newsfeed. Um, and my answer to that question would be as long as people are actively using Facebook, you don't, uh, you have an audience that you can reach out to and you can make Facebook advertising work. So if you take a look at my client portfolio that, that I, uh, that I previously showed you, you can see that most of my clients are actually software businesses and SaaS businesses, which 
don't look like the type of businesses that would use Facebook ads for growth. But here we go. We generate really great results with that, um, with those clients. Um, hence why I'm today here and talking to you uh, about Facebook ads for newsletter growth. <clears throat> but you cannot run a successful Facebook advertising campaign without a couple of things. Um, and we're going to go through each and every one of these things together. Um, some of them you already know, some of them maybe not so much. Let's start with the Facebook Business Manager. If you haven't heard about Facebook Business Manager, this is something that Facebook introduced a couple of years ago, but I don't think everyone enrolled into it yet. However, that is going to become obligatory um, in let's say um, a couple of months. So what Facebook Business Manager actually is, um, is it essentially looks like this. I blurred um, my clients out, um, but it's essentially an umbrella which hosts both your Facebook advertising account um, and then on the right side, it should say, it should say Facebook page. Um, but what essentially does is it's like a folder with your business assets. So your business assets are there separated from your personal profile. If you remember Facebook advertising back in the day, um, when Facebook ads were still super cheap, uh, and you can only advertise for Facebook page likes. Um, so back then your personal profile was essentially tied to, uh, your Facebook advertising account and it was all together. So when you went on facebook.com, that's how you would access your Facebook ads account. Now Facebook likes to keep business separated from pleasure, hence why they created the business manager. So you don't need to access your Facebook business assets through your personal profile, but you go to business.facebook.com um, and access your business assets from there. Um, so like I said, it's like an umbrella that hosts both your Facebook advertising account, your Facebook page, and every other assets that we're going to talk about in a couple of moments. The second thing that you need to run a successful Facebook advertising campaign is a Facebook advertising account, of course. So without a Facebook advertising account, you won't be able to run Facebook ads. Um, and essentially it looks something like this. I couldn't put a proper, uh, proper image in there, uh, because it would just be all blurred out. Um, essentially what Facebook advertising account is, it's a tool that allows you to run Facebook ads in case you're not familiar with that. The third thing you need, um, is a Facebook pixel. You don't actually need it, but it is great to have if you want to take advantage of the power that Facebook advertising has. So if you want to do either retargeting, which is what we're going to talk about as well. Um, if you want to exclude people who sign up for your email list, um, if you want to retarget people who visit your webpage and show them an ad for your newsletter, you can do that with a Facebook pixel. If you don't have a Facebook pixel, you won't be able to do that. So I truly recommend implementing it. If you're not familiar with the Facebook pixel, uh, it's essentially a snippet of code, uh, which you implement to your, uh, web page. Um, and then it, it essentially it's connected to your Facebook advertising account. Um, nowadays Facebook has a lot of integrations like WooCommerce, WordPress, uh, Squarespace, Shopify, whatever. So you don't really need to implement this code if your integration is supported. Um, however, it's it, even if you have to go through the process of implementing this code to your web page, it's super easy. It only takes a minute. Um, I'm not a developer. I'm not a programmer. I barely know any CSS. Um, so, and this was incredibly easy for me to do. So, um, the fourth thing that not a lot of people mention is a Facebook page. Um, again, it's not necessary to have one. If you want to advertise on Facebook, you can also advertise on Facebook without the Facebook page. Um, however, it is something that is good to have. Uh, why? Because if you don't have a Facebook page, 
you will not be able to advertise or to use the most prominent advertising space, which is Facebook newsfeed. And that's the, that's essentially what you see when you open your Facebook app or go to facebook.com on your desktop and you see like all of your um, friend notifications, that's the Facebook newsfeed. And without a Facebook page, you will not be able to advertise there. Um, now I know what you're thinking or what a lot of you are thinking right now, either you don't have a Facebook page or you have a Facebook page, but it's not super updated. Does it need to be updated? How often you need to update it? Um, so first of all, you only need to have a Facebook page, but if you want to make the best out of it, uh, I would recommend updating it, let's say at least three times a month. So people see that it's not outdated. Something is happening. This is a business that is alive and kicking. Um, and like I said, it doesn't take a lot of work, um, but it is super helpful if you have at least a couple of updates every couple, uh, every month. Um, but apart from that, if you're not yet at a point where you want to truly invest in a strong Facebook, uh, Facebook page presence, you don't need to do that. Um, but it definitely helps to have at least a couple of new updates every once in a while. And the fifth rule or, um, the fifth thing that you need, if you want to run a successful Facebook advertising campaign, um, is a better understanding of your target audience. Um, without that understanding, you won't be able to target correctly. You'll end up with a low, either a low quality audience or no audience at all. You won't know how to talk to people. Um, and if you don't know how to talk to your audience, your ads are not going to convert. So understanding your target audience is something that a lot of businesses forget about. Um, so I typically have, or I go through this very quick checklist, um, of, you know, just asking yourself, first of all, who's your target audience? Um, all of, you know, essentially who your target audience is, but try to really be specific about it. Is there a persona that you're talking to? Um, how old are they? Where do they come from? Um, and essentially what are they interested in? Um, if you've done Facebook ads before, uh, if you ever played around in the Facebook ads manager, you know, that there are a ton of different options that you can target a ton of different interests, behaviors. So knowing all of these things will help you determine a really good target audience because, um, like you probably know the rule. If you're talking to everyone, you're not talking to anyone. Uh, so try to be as specific about your target audience as possible and take advantage of what, of what Facebook has to offer when it comes to targeting interests, targeting behaviors, targeting demographic information, and so on. There are three ways of building an audience with Facebook ads. Um, each of them are like each of these options is a very specific option and each of them is different. We're going to go through, uh, all three of them. And I'm going to tell you how you can use that for yourself and for your next Facebook advertising campaign. So first of all, we have custom audiences. Um, again, if you're not familiar with Facebook ads as a marketing tool, custom audience is essentially building a warm audience out of an existing audience. So custom with custom audiences, you can, first of all, upload your email list to Facebook and Facebook will find those people on Facebook and you can target those people, show them ads, um, for your products, your services, whatever you sell. Um, that's custom audience. Custom audience also is when you're doing retargeting. So when you implement your Facebook pixel, to your, to your web page and then retarget all of those people who visited your web page, but never signed up for your newsletter. That's a custom audience as well. A custom audience is also anyone who liked your Facebook page. So you can build a custom audience of people who have liked your Facebook page or now that Facebook 
spot Instagram, you can also create a custom audience of people who have visited your Instagram profile, but never subscribed to your newsletter. Um, so that's a custom audience. It's a warm audience. It's an existing audience of people who already know you in one way or the other. One of my actually favorite types of audiences is a lookalike audience. So a lookalike audience is essentially building a cold audience that's based on characteristics of people that are in your custom audience. So let's say that you implement a Facebook pixel to your web page and Facebook is collecting all of the, uh, of the data of people who are visiting your web page. So, and it creates a custom audience out of those people. You can then take that custom audience and create a lookalike audience out of it. And what Facebook will do is they'll look for those people that are in your custom audience. Um, they'll find their profiles on Facebook. They will review the profiles and search for some common characteristics common interests that that custom audience has, and then they will create a brand new cold audience that's based on that custom audience. Um, what I find relevant for what you do uh, and what we talk about uh, today, so building your newsletter, um, getting more subscribers, what you can do also is you can create a custom audience out of your um, let's say email subscribers, or maybe even subscribers that engage the most with your emails, and then take that custom audience and build a lookalike audience out of it. So again, what you'll end up with is a brand new cult audience that's super similar to the custom audience of people of your email subscribers that engage with your email list the most. Um, why I love custom audiences is because it takes the guesswork away from you. So previously we didn't have, back in the days, we didn't have custom audiences. We didn't have interest targeting. Uh, we didn't have lookalike audiences. All we had was interest targeting. So we had to do a little bit of guesswork, trying to determine who our target audience is, what to do, like what are they interested in, how old are they? And we had to do the, that guesswork and a lot of optimization if we wanted to get even close to a target audience, uh, to our target audience. Um, but now with lookalike audiences, Facebook takes that guesswork away from us. And then the third option is what I already mentioned is kind of the classic one, a traditional, um, type of targeting called interest targeting. Um, and that's again, building a cold audience, um, with interests and demographic information. Um, so that means knowing your target audience, their kind of average age, where do they come from? What are they interested in? How do they behave online? Um, are they tech early adopters? Do they upload a lot of photos on Facebook? So all of that behavior you can actually target, but in order to use that kind of targeting. So in order to use interest targeting, you really need to know your target audience better. Um, considering again, that we talk to today that we talk about, um, newsletter growth, what I would recommend that you start with, if I need to do a recommendation is, um, that you start with custom audiences and you start with lookalike audiences. Um, there's a small catch there. Um, if you want to use a lookalike audience, you need to have at least 100 people in your custom audience. That means if you don't have a Facebook pixel implemented on your webpage right now, um, and if you implement it today, you'll need to wait a couple of moments in order that like for, for 100 people to actually visit your web page. So you can create a lookalike audience out of it. So a custom lookalike audience needs a custom audience of at least 100 people. Um, but as soon as you have 100 people, you can start creating a lookalike audience, audience out of it. However, another thing that I should not forget to mention is. The bigger the custom audiences, the better the lookalike audience is going to be, uh, because Facebook will have a lot of, a lot more data to work with. Now I want to go through a couple of ideas, a couple of recommendations. Um, again, this is all quite general, uh, and it will fall down to you to actually decide 
what to do for your specific case. Um, but if we're talking about custom audiences, something that I would recommend for new setter growth, uh, if you want to generate more leads, uh, generate more email signups for your new setter with custom audiences, I would definitely recommend retargeting existing web page visitors who did not sign up for your newsletter. Um, I think this is one of the like low hanging fruits that a lot of businesses just forget about. Um, so don't forget, like not everyone who visits your web page, whatever you do, is going to actually sign up for your newsletter. There's a big portion of people who visit your web page and then either get distracted um, and they close a the page, never visit it again, um, or maybe they're not in the right mindset just yet, but you can capture those people um, again by showing them an ad, a Facebook ad when they're on Facebook and then kind of just reminding them that they forget, forgot to do that. Um, do not forget to exclude existing subscribers uh, when you're doing that. So you do not want to advertise your newsletter to people who already subscribe to your newsletter. Um, so make sure to either upload an existing email list to Facebook and exclude it from targeting, which is something that Facebook also offers, or do that more dynamically um, by having Facebook trigger an event that happens when someone subscribe to your uh, subscribes to your newsletter and then excluding that event from targeting. So those would be my top two recommendations for building a custom audience. Um, and then we have a lookalike audiences, something that uh, I, g I gave already a couple of recommendations before, but let's just go through them again. First of all, um, I would definitely recommend targeting people similar to those on your email list. Um, if building a big email list is of importance to you, um, then definitely the first, you should do the first thing. So upload your existing email list to Facebook, the bigger, the better, um, create a lookalike audience out of it, and then use that lookalike audience to build your newsletter even more. And again, do not forget to exclude people who already signed up. The second option is targeting people that are similar to those that are visiting your web page. So not only are you going to be doing retargeting when it, using custom audiences, you also want to build a lookalike audience out of those people that are visiting your web page and then target those with ads for your newsletter. And the third option would be targeting people similar to existing customers. That is especially important if you are trying to generate really quality leads that actually convert if you're selling something through your newsletter. Um, so again, do not forget to exclude anyone who already purchased, anyone who already signed up for your newsletter. Um, but targeting people similar to existing customers will definitely definitely bring you closer to a more quality audience. Uh, you do have to have, again, at least 100 customers in order to use that kind of a lookalike audience, um, but it is super helpful to have, um, to have that kind of audience to build a quality lookalike audience from. And then we have the interest targeting, which I uh, quickly mentioned before as well. Um, with interest targeting, you can target people interested in specific things. Um, so let's say that uh, you're a small business and you know that uh, a lot of your target audience is also interested in Tim Ferriss and they uh, read Tim Ferriss's newsletter, they listen to his podcast. What you can do is you can go to Facebook, um, to Facebook Ads Manager, and essentially target people who are interested in Tim Ferriss, um, who have engaged with his Facebook page, um, who have probably read his blog. So you can target all of those people with interest targeting. Um, interest targeting also allows you to target specific behaviors. So not just interests that people kind of express through Facebook, um, but you can also target behaviors such as people that are parents, um, people that um, um, are engaged shoppers on Facebook that shop a lot on Facebook, uh, people who own small business owner, uh, small businesses, and behaviors are different from interests in a, in the way that um, 
behaviors are just, it's better quality data that Facebook uh, collects. So it's not for, for example, if we take parents as an example, um, you have an option to target parenting as an interest, which again, will probably mean people that are parents, but also people who are interested in being parents, but not yet parents. If you target a behavior called parents, Facebook collects information about who is actually a parent based on their Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook uploads, pictures, uh, them saying, hey, I'm a mother of this Facebook profile. Um, so behavior is more quality data. If you have an option to use it, absolutely use it. The question that I typically get most is, okay, so I know how to use Facebook interest targeting, but how do I know what my target audience is interested in? How do I determine that? Uh, how do I get closer to that target audience? Um, Facebook Business Manager has a really neat feature called Audience Insights. If you're not familiar with that, I definitely recommend checking that out. What you can do with audience insights is you can take, let's say one interest and see what Facebook pages, people interested in that interest actually like. So for example, let's say, let's say that Tim Ferriss is your competitor, uh, or like he, you know, that Tim Ferriss has a similar target audience than you, that you have. What you can do is you can go to Facebook audience insights and on the left side where you can see interests, you can enter Tim Ferriss um, and Facebook will show you what Tim Ferriss's audience, what other Facebook pages they have liked and what other interests they have. So not only will you be able to target Tim Ferriss, but you'll be, you'll also uncover all of the other interests that people interested in Tim Ferriss are interested in all the page likes that they have, all the pages that they liked. So, um, there's this whole universe of interests and page likes that you're not really thinking about right now. Um, but you're going to uncover them. If you use audience insights and just play around with it a little bit, you'll also see the demographic of, of Tim Ferriss's audience, for example, their location, um, their, uh, education, um, their, um, marital status. So you can, you can see all of that data in there. If you just use Facebook audience insights. Um, but now that we have kind of covered the foundation and the target audiences, um, you're probably asking like, what do I need to do to actually grow my email list? Because now we have the target audience, uh, you know, essentially what you need, um, if you want to advertise on Facebook. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the Facebook campaign structure. Um, that like, this is the point where a lot of people, if they are not familiar with the Facebook advertising manager and they enter and they start using Facebook, ad Facebook advertising manager for the first time, they don't know what campaign means, what ad set means, what ad means, like, what is this? What role does it have? Um, and I'm here to tell you, so, um, first of all, we have the campaign level. The campaign level is the top level of a campaign. So when you are going to run, when you decide, Hey, I want to grow my email list with Facebook, you're going to launch a campaign. And that's the first, the topmost level of Facebook advertising. Every campaign has at least one or ideally more ad sets. Um, ad sets are basically where you decide who to target. So each audience, should have one ad set and then each ad set should have at least one or several ads. Um, and we're going to talk about that in detail as well, but let's just start with Facebook lead ads. So if I were to recommend one objective to use with Facebook ads an objective is essentially the goal that you need to decide what your goal is when you're launching a campaign, I would definitely recommend that you launch Facebook lead ads. As you know, you can advertise on Facebook for traffic. So that means, Hey, Facebook generate me as many, um, as much traffic to my webpage as possible. You can advertise for conversions. You can advertise for purchases. If 
For example, if you have an e-commerce store, you're going to launch a Facebook catalog sales campaign, which means that it's going to be optimized to get as many sales as possible. But if you're trying to grow your newsletter, what I recommend 100% is to launch Facebook lead ads. First of all, Facebook lead, ha lead ads have super easy implementation. You don't need to implement an event on your web page that fires when someone subscribes so Facebook can optimize for that. It's essentially an ad that lets people subscribe automatically by just a click of a button. So that's my second point. Facebook lead ads collect emails automatically. Um, so your user, your target audience, they'll essentially see an ad, they'll click on an ad, and because they're on Facebook and they had to somehow um, use Facebook with their personal email, Facebook is going to collect that email automatically and by just a click of a button, they can be subscribed to your newsletter. Um, Facebook also offers a lot of integrations uh, with a lot of different tools, ConvertKit, MailChimp, like you name it, it's probably there. Um, so you don't even need to custom code anything, it's there. Um, Facebook lead ads also have high conversion rates because they are so easy to use for the end user um, because it, by just a click of a button, they can actually subscribe to a newsletter, um, hence the high conversion rate. Uh, people tend to engage with lead ads a lot. Um, so if you want to grow your newsletter, if you want to generate more subscribers, definitely start with lead ads. This is how lead ads look. Um, in case you're not familiar with lead ads, you probably seen at least a couple of them in your Facebook newsfeed. But essentially, um, on the far left side, this is an ad that your target audience is going to see. Um, the click of a button, the button can say essentially subscribe and you have a couple of options that you can choose from um, in Facebook Ads Manager. When they click subscribe, like I said, Facebook automatically collects their email, um, collects their um, name, you can also have Facebook collect any other information or you can have your user um, enter any kind of information that you're typically collecting um, with your newsletter. And then a person just hits submit and success, he, she is subscribed to your newsletter. When you're launching a campaign, when you're trying to launch a lead ads campaign, um, this is the option that you're going to use. This is the objective that I previously mentioned. So when you click create a new campaign in your Facebook advertising manager, um, Facebook will pop this window up um, and say, hey, you need to choose a campaign objective. Your campaign objective is actually the goal that you want to reach with Facebook ads. And now considering that our goal today is to grow your newsletter, you're going to choose lead generation. On the ad set level, as I mentioned before, each campaign contains at least one or ideally more ad sets. Um, each ad set being a separate audience that you're targeting, a separate audience that you're A-B testing. Um, that's why it's important to target only one audience per ad set. Um, so when you're setting up an ad set, once you decide on your, um, your objective and you go into the ad set level, um, Facebook will let you target um, multiple audiences, but keep in mind that again, you want to target only one audience per ad set, because you can imagine if you put in one ad set, if you put your custom audience of web page visitors, you put a lookalike audience, uh, you put some interest targeting audiences, like when you get that first lead, you won't know where he or she is coming from. So you want to have at least one audience per, you want to have one audience per ad set, um, and then just A-B test different audiences, see which ones work, which ones generate a lot of leads, which ones don't, um, which ones you can turn off. Um, so just make sure to, like I said, target only one audience per ad set. A lot of people, a lot of small businesses that are kind of new to Facebook ads also make one big mistake of having two different ad sets using the same audience, but different visuals. That's also not an ideal setup. 
Um, because if you're using, if you have two different ad sets, both using the same audience, you're competing against yourself on the Facebook ad marketplace. Um, so again, just to reiterate, because it's super important, um, be sure that you have one ad set per audience um, and not have two, set, two ad sets for the same audience. And once you go through this process of creating an ad set, Facebook will prompt you and will show you kind of the third level of ad creation. Um, and that's the ad creative where you'll actually start building your ads, meaning the text, the headline, the description, everything. And that's essentially what you see when you open your Facebook newsfeed, what you see as essentially an ad. Um, again, another thing that I recommend is to implement a lot of ads into your ad set. You don't want to have just one ad running. Why? If you have one ad running, um, you won't know what your target audience responds to, uh, what kind of copy, what kind of visuals. You always want to be A-B testing things. So make sure to implement, I typically do, I typically implement, let's say, um, if it's even like a super small business that I work with, I typically implement three to five ads. Uh, if it's a bigger business, I, we definitely go up to, let's say 30 different ads. Um, but again, make sure that it's not just one ad that you implement, um, but create several visuals, a couple different versions of copy, um, and just create several ads. So you know, and deter you can, you, you are able to determine what your audience responds to, what tone you should be using, um, and so on. Um, I also, also want to give you a couple of design recommendations um, because I know that this is the point where a lot of people get stuck on. Um, first of all, you don't need to be a designer to design fantastic looking Facebook ads. All you need is a tool um, like Canva. If you're not familiar with Canva, go to canva.com. It's incredibly simple to use. They have templates that are specific to Facebook ads with the proper dimensions and everything. Um, so Canva offers a ton of different options. Uh, you can also import, if you have like a color scheme for your brand, you can import that. And with just a click of a button or a couple of clicks, um, you are able to create a super nice professional looking Facebook ad without breaking a sweat. Um, I already mentioned testing different approaches. You don't want to have just one ad running, just one design. Um, you want to A-B test several different things. Um, here are a couple of ideas what I typically, uh, what I typically design and what A-B tests I typically run. Um, I create an ad with a person, uh, meaning a person is somewhere on that visual, either, I don't know, holding a laptop, typing something in, or being in an environment that resonates with my target audience. Um, so something person related, I want to put a person on that visuals just to A-B test if my target audience will respond to that. The other visual that I would implement ideally is just, let's say, text on the image and maybe something going in the background, but not too much, maybe blurred out a little bit. Uh, but the prominent text, a catch line, a phrase, whatever, um, just being prominent, being there. So I see that maybe it's the text that people will respond to. Uh, and the third one is maybe using an illustration of some sort that again, resonates with the target audience. Um, and those would be kind of the three visuals that I would start with. Um, on that note, I want to talk about visuals that build a connection. Um, you do, if, if you're targeting to a specific target audience, if you're talking to a specific target audience, you want that visual to reflect that, you know, who you're talking to. So if you're targeting, and I love to give this example, um, I had a client and their target audience was, they, they were construction workers. So essentially what we did, did, we put a construction site on the visual. And what that meant is when they scrolled through their Facebook newsfeed and when they saw a construction site, like it immediately resonated. They immediately knew, oh, this is for me. That's why you want to have a visual that builds a connection, a visual that resonates with your target audience. So 
if you're selling software, make sure to maybe put a picture of someone on a laptop, um, books, if you're selling books or building something book related, uh, then have someone with an open book, um, just to make sure that your target audience will know that this visual that you're using is intended for them. I also have a couple of copy recommendations, a couple of formulas that I follow. Um, on the very far left side, you're going to see the pain dream fix formula. Um, if there is one thing, one copy advice that I would like you to take away from today is to use the pain dream fix formula whenever you're promoting something. Um, I think this is, I, I think I took this or I sold this from, uh, from Amy Hoy and Alex Hillman. Um, they frequently talk about the pain dream fix formula when it comes to copywriting, which means that you start with the pain. So when you're addressing something is someone, you know what they're struggling with, you know, who your target audience is, you know, what problems they have, what problems they want to solve. And you want to essentially push on that problem a little bit. You want them to hurt a little bit, to be honest. So start with that pain, put it out there. Um, and then start talking about the dream. Um, what would the ideal outcome be and talk about the fix. Now you're probably wondering, isn't this just for sales related ads? Does this work for newsletters as well? Absolutely. It does. So if you have, let's say a lead magnet that you're promoting, just start with that. What problem does your lead magnet solve? There's probably a pain behind that, a pain that your target audience has start with that and then move into the dream. Like, Hey, imagine what would an ideal world look like? And then at the end, communicate the fix and end with a strong call to action that essentially says to people subscribe below. Um, so that's the pain dream fix formula that I wanted to talk about. And I have an example that you'll be able to screenshot later on if you want to, um, talking about the pain dream fix formula. Um, if we use that kind of formula, we're also going to end up with a longer uh, copy. Um, and I want to tell you and emphasize today that do not be afraid of a long form copy, long form copy works like magic on Facebook. Um, so you don't like gone are the days of when we were using like one sentence copy where Facebook was essentially limiting us to how many uh, characters we can use when describing something. Uh, nowadays, um, long form copy ads typically work better than short form copy ads. And I'm always surprised at that as well. I do a ton of AB tests on a daily basis, just trying to figure out like, is long form copy also going to work with this client? Is it going to work with this type of audience? And it always does. So do not be afraid of long form copy. I'm going to show you an example of like one of the longest copies that I have wrote for an ad, um, but it worked. Um, and then the third, the third point that I want to make is to test different approaches again. So you don't want to have just one copy in there, but you want to AB test. Like, um, if I'm more, let's say for the lack of a better example, if I'm more emotional, does it resonate with my target audience be better? If I use this word for describing something, does it resonate better than the other word? Um, so make sure that you're always experimenting, always looking new angle, new, new, looking for new angles, always looking for different opportunities with different uh, copy versions. Um, hopefully, hopefully on your screen, this is as crisp as it can be. Uh, but this is one of the, I think one of the longest copies that I wrote for a Facebook ad. Um, and what a coincidence it's for stacking the bricks. So for Amy and Alex, um, essentially this is an ad for, um, their freebie. So for their lead magnet, the year of hustle. Uh, and as you can see, um, like this is a, I, I, I think I worked, uh, with Amy on this copy and it's a fantastic copy. I'll just go through it very quickly. Um, but I do recommend that you read it in detail, um, at your own time. So, like I said, we started with the pain. Some days you just want to quit your job and fire all your clients. It's true. And I know it because I've been there. So their, um, their target audience, if you 
don't know them, their target audience are small business owners, or maybe not even small business owners, but people who aspire to be small business owners. They do client work at the moment, but they want to generate their income through selling educational products or through selling products. So we start with the pain. Um, in the third paragraph, we go, earning a healthy mid six figure income, but completely beholden to what other people wanted me to do or make. The money is nice, but freedom is what I really wanted. Freedom to make my own products that people loved. So if you imagine someone being in that target audience, so someone who's currently working hours, just doing client work and they're like, they, they have a client on one hand, just demanding one thing, client on the other side, demanding the other thing. And they're just stressed and they're reading this and they're like, oh my God, yes, I do want to earn a healthy mid six figure income, but with products. Um, so when we finish with the pain, um, we go into actually a story mode. So Amy says, I know because I've been there too. I'm Amy Hoy. And in 2008, I made my money consulting, trading time for money and client projects that never fully satisfied me. One year later in 2009, I started selling my own products between a mix of tiny educational products and my first software as a service, I made $85,000. So at this point we're transitioning into a dream and the target audience that's reading this is like, Oh, I also want to make a 5k with educational products. Um, and then we kind of, when we talk about the dream, we transition into a feet in, into the fix. Um, so for example, on the right side, you're going to see, because if you are, I've got the perfect resource for you. Best of all, it's completely free. It's my year of hustle roadmap. It'll take you through each of these steps and then you'll learn. And we have the, uh, the bullet points there. So as you can see, the copy is super long, but this ad, we tested it. We AB tested it with a shorter copy. This ad worked like magic. Um, another thing that, uh, I also wanted to kind of emphasize here, um, and show you is this ad for kickoff labs. So, um, their target audience, um, they're typically small businesses who want to run online competitions and are searching for a software to do so. So kickoff labs offers that. And, um, the image that I wanted to show you is like this specific visual that we used, um, because it resonates with the target audience. Like I said, um, make sure that if you're targeting small businesses, you want to make sure that the image resonates essentially with, um, what they're looking for uh, online, uh, what are the images that they typically resonate with them. Uh, you can also, on the right side, you're going to see on the visual, you're going to see like the try for free button that we implemented on the image. That is um, a visual tool that, uh, and a visual hack that you can use if you also want people clicking on your ad as much as possible and signing up. Um, so that always helps just implementing like a button there uh, or designing a rectangle with a shadow. Um, and the click through rates are much, much higher. And before we finish, um, talking about like doing lead ads and finish this presentation. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of do's and don'ts. Um, first of all, I already mentioned that at the very beginning, um, do talk to a specific audience when writing copy, you know, who your target audience is, you know, what they're interested in. So don't assume that you're targeting everyone, because if you're talking to everyone, you're not talking to anyone at all. Um, so make sure that you are addressing a specific person like Amy was, if let's say if someone out of her target audience was reading this, someone who's super satisfied with his nine to five job and wouldn't change it for the world. If he or she were reading that they would be like, yeah, not for me. So make sure that you're talking to a specific audience when writing copy, using the words that they would be using, using phrases that they typically use. Um, so yeah, that always, um, works a lot better and generates better and high quality leads. Do advertise lead magnets and enticing offers, but do not run Facebook ads that simply say sign up for my newsletter. Um, it is always helpful if you have something that you can offer back to a person or a promise that you can make something that they'll get after they sign up, even if it's not a lead magnet, even if it's 
you know, if you sign up, you'll, you'll get this and that daily in your, um, in your inbox lead with a specific offer, either that's a lead magnet. And like I said, or like I said, an enticing offer, but don't do very general ads saying sign up for my newsletter. Those general ads will not work or um, you'll just end up with low quality leads that will go away as soon as possible. Um, do use parameters when, tar when targeting. So lead ads, if you do not know, uh, lead ads also allow you to use UDM parameters um, or any kind of other parameters that you want to be using for tracking. Why do you want to use UDM parameters or other parameters? Um, you want to make sure that the target audience that you're generating or the, the subscribers that you're generating are not just subscribers, but they also engage with your new setter. Uh, they buy your products. You want to make sure that it's a quality audience and without using parameters, you won't be able to determine that. So don't ignore analytics when determining which audience is of better quality. Make sure that you're not just tracking the cost at which you're getting leads at, but like the go the next step, go further and track, do they open their newsletter? Um, is this audience that I targeted is is it buying, is, are, are they buying my product that I'm essentially selling through my newsletter? So make sure to use as much tracking as possible. I, I know that before I started sharing my screen and before um, I started doing the presentation, someone was already asking about like, hey, we, we were getting uh, leads at $2 um, and we want to go lower. It's great to have that ambition to go lower, but you also need to keep track of the quality of leads that they're coming through because I can, for my, for my clients, I can now say, Hey, we'll go from $2 a lead to 5 cents a lead in no time because I'll target third world countries that, uh, don't really, uh, that like uh, that, uh, where, where they have Facebook bots, they just subscribe and generate leads for absolutely no money at all. And you end up with a very low quality, um, low quality email list, but you can at least say that you did it for five cents. Right. Uh, so that's not, that's not an ideal situation that you want to find yourself in. Um, so what you want to do is again, just go another layer and track, um, for example, track if they're opening their emails, if they're engaging, if they're clicking and so on. Um, and now last but not least, setting a budget because I know that I'll get questions about budget. Uh, so let's, let's start here. Um, I have two rules when it comes to setting a budget. The first rule is to spend as much as you can lose. So Facebook ads work. Um, if they wouldn't work, I wouldn't be here today talking to you. I wouldn't be working with clients still. I wouldn't have clients, um, that I'm collaborating, collaborating with for several years now. Um, so they definitely work. But when you're starting out, especially if you're a operating on limited budget, B you're just starting out, never done Facebook ads before there is a learning curve, um, before you hone in your target audiences, hone in on the ads and on the visuals that you want to be using. So my go-to rule is always to spend as much as I can lose because I just want to feel comfortable in my decisions and not spend 5k on Facebook ads and get zero leads out of them. The second rule is if possible, use a formula for setting the max cost per lead that you can spend. Um, I have a very simple formula that I follow. And that is, especially if you sell something through your newsletter, um, so for example, I take the net income or customer lifetime value. So let's say, um, as an example, um, through my email list, I'm selling my video course. So I'll take the net income that I typically generate through that email list. Uh, I'm sorry, net income that I typically generate when someone buys my, um, buys my online course. Um, let's say that's. $200. So the example that I have low, uh, and the conversion rate from when someone subscribes to my newsletter and then purchases my product 
is 5%. So if I take those two numbers, I can easily calculate the max cost per lead. So let's say my max cost per lead is $10. Um, if I take that net income and the conversion rate, which means that if I spend $10 on a lead with Facebook ads, I'm breaking even. If I'm spending less than $10 per lead with Facebook ads, I'm making profit. If I'm spending more than $10 on a lead with Facebook ads, I'm losing money. Um, so this is kind of the formula that I use for calculating a mass, ma max cost per lead. And I want to finish off with uh, fun illustration and just saying, if, if you've done Facebook ads before, or if, if you haven't done Facebook ads before, if you were ever at a point where everything was just so frustrating and Facebook seemed like a super big monster that you don't know how to tackle, you don't know how to approach. Um, if you take the approach that I took today, so small steps, knowing your target audience, implementing lead ads and starting essentially from scratch and going from there. So not doing everything all together, but like step by step, then at the end, you're going to see that this big Facebook advertising monster is actually not that scary at all. Um, you don't need to do everything at once. You need to do it step by step, but knowing like each step, knowing what you're doing. And if, if you follow the examples that um, I gave, gave to you today, you're definitely on a good way there. So um, that's essentially it. Um, I want to invite you all, um, we're, we're probably going to ask, uh, answer some, some uh, questions, but I want to invite you all, if there's a question that you do not want to ask here because it's sensitive for any reason, uh, either you can send it to Louis or um, you can send it to me at whitesidesuperspicemedia.com. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much, Moitza. Um, that was great. Uh, are you fine to hang around for a couple of minutes and um, answer some questions? Yes, absolutely. I'm excited. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, uh, yeah, if anyone has any more questions, please get them in the, um, in the chat. I have eight here already. Um, maybe we can go through those. So you talked a bit, Martin asked about budgets or budget steps. You, you talked a bit about that. Um, I think probably one question, especially for the beginners is, is, is there a, like an absolute minimum budget that is acceptable? I mean, the point? Facebook doesn't really have a minimum. Um, but I would say like, five dollars a day from my uh from my experience is the absolute minimum that i would work with like facebook would, will allow you one dollar a day but i would start at five got it okay okay um then magdalena asked the question whether you have any golden rules for visuals and for copy that's worked um i think you already covered that pretty well i don't know if you have anything that you wanted to add um not really just the long form copy, definitely. I think people are still like, they're, they're like, this, this is not going to work. I won't even try it, but it, it really does work. Um, so long form copy. And then again, just the, the hack that I mentioned by doing like a button on the visual, um, that absolutely, I, tip, I, I would start there. Awesome. Um, then Paul asks, he's curious about kind of the, the typical cost per subscriber you might get for a newsletter. Um, I know you mentioned, obviously you can get that number down as low as you like, if you don't care about the quality, um, do you have any ideas about that? So, uh, I like, I think some, some sort of an average one that I would, um, mention here is $2, but again, it varies from client to client. I have one client, uh, and our cost per lead essentially, or ideal cost per lead varies from eight dollars to two dollars so we have uh when we're advertising one thing our ideal cost per lead is two dollars but when we're advertising the other thing our ideal cost per lead is eight dollars so i would say that I, again you need to we had that formula you need to determine the good cost per lead for you but essentially apart from that like let's say two to four dollars is kind of roughly the estimate of a good starter cost per lead let's say so 
Got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think people are aware. You know, for newsletters, Facebook ads maybe aren't the the cheapest form, but it's about growing your list faster, right? It's about adding extra growth on top of the organic. So, yep, it's going to be, uh, you know, referrals are maybe on average twenty cents per per new subscriber, but yep. you're kind of constrained by how many subscribers you already have with that. And yep. Facebook, there's a lot of people out there who uh, <laughs> are happy to join in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So Ali asked, uh, is there a ballpark range for how large your mm -hmm. newsletter audience should be in order to guarantee a successful lookalike audience? Um, like as, as, as many as you have. <laughs> uh, so Facebook, like the, the lowest um, amount or like you need to have at least 100 people. So that's that's a fact. Um, and then the more you have, the better it is. Um, essentially, like it, it's like that if, if you have 100 people and 100 uh, 150 people 150 people is going to be better because facebook will have more data to work with um so i would say like take the list that you have how big it is um and then implement that and just start using that got it so have, have you seen people be successful with a look like audience with under a thousand uh Absolutely. people on your list already yeah yeah, Facebook Facebook is a lot smarter than we think. <laughs> sure. Um so so their their algorithm is really good and they're improving it every step of the way. Um so like even if you're operating on a very small list, when you start advertising, Facebook will see, okay, so people within the age range of 25 to 45 year old, they engage a lot more than people that are outside of this range and they will start optimizing for those people. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if you're operating with a smaller custom audience and building a look like audience out of a smaller custom audience, Facebook is still smart enough to determine who to target based on the information that they're getting in, uh, based on the engagement, the conversion rate and so on. Got it. Okay, brilliant. Uh, then Kevin asked, um, is there any reason you should stop an ad before it's run? Uh, not really. I mean, if it's if it's running okay, don't stop it. <laughs> um, that, that's kind of a golden golden rule. Um, Facebook also, if he he he's maybe asking about, um, let's say you have ten different ads. Um, in an ad set and one of the ads is just not really generating the traction that you would like to see. Um, like if, yeah. okay, so he, if, asking, if you're yeah. not, if you're not getting leads right away, I would, so wait for at least a day or two based on the budget. If your budget is higher, you can wait just one day. If your budget is a, is a little bit lower, uh, let's say $5 a day, wait for two days. And if after two days is not getting, if you're not getting the leads at a good cost for you, then by all means, stop the ad and but learn from that. Nothing's lost. You can take that ad, look at it. What's the copy that you used? What's the visual that you used and take a step in a different direction. So even if you don't generate any leads, you can still learn from that experience uh, experiment uh, and say, okay, so the visual with a person didn't work. So now I'm just going to launch a visual that has an illustration. Um, so that's, you can, you can stop it. Um, absolutely. If it's not generating you the results that you need. Got it. Awesome. So we have two questions left that I think we'll try and cover and then we'll, we'll call it a, a, a day. Cause I know we, we went over and I don't want to be, uh, stealing too much of your time. So the first one is what kind of lead, what kind of lead magnet works best in, in your opinion? So. Hmm. I know um, the answer is your, it depends, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really depends. Uh, I mean, whatever you can do that, that would be, that would be my, uh, my answer. But um, for example, cheat sheets, checklists, um, absolutely. And um, um, email, email course. Yeah. Yep. Email course. I, I don't know why I forgot the name. Uh, so any kind of email courses that people go through, let's say a seven day email course on how to do this and that. Uh, so if you can do that, absolutely. It definitely takes a little bit more time. Um, but checklist is perfect as well. Uh, PDF downloadable. Uh, I have, for example, one of the lead magnets that worked great for me is, um, was a PDF 
uh, on how to launch a profitable campaign in seven days. Um, so that's kind of a lead magnet that worked best. I think that um, what plays a bigger role is what you're teaching people or what you're offering people, not like the type and the format, uh, but the content that you provide. Uh, so I would say maybe focus more on the content and not the type. Uh, and then based on the content that you decide to provide, um, decide on, you know, what type is, what type of lead magnet is the best to, um, to use for that type of content. Awesome. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. One really interesting thing that helped me, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but when I was completely starting out as a beginner with Facebook ads is nowadays you can, you can, I think still go and check out what other, what other sites are running, like what other newsletters are running in terms of Facebook ad copy, right? So you can go and yeah. visit their page and see all yeah. of the ads that they're still running. Yeah. And often they'll have done a lot of hard work in, in trying to find stuff out for you, right? Yep. So Facebook now made it available that I think it's, don't get me wrong. I think it's facebook.com slash ads slash library. Or if you just Google Facebook ads library, uh, you'll probably stumble upon an article that shows you that shows you how to get that. Uh, but what you can do now is you can find either your competitors, um, or someone that has a similar target audience that you have, you can go to your Facebook, uh, go to their Facebook page and see the ads that they're running. So do not copy them. Uh, you don't, you, you know, want to, want to, uh, create your own ads, but use that for an inspiration of some sorts to see what they are doing because they probably, if they're running ads, they're probably working. Okay. Um, so like see what, what type of visual they're running, what type of lead magnets they're running. Um, and then learn from that, uh, take that knowledge and create your own campaign based on, uh, based on that. Awesome. And then the last question, if you have another minute is just that, um, I'm not sure who, who this is. They, they call themselves friend, but, uh, so that's very kind of them. Um, they wanted you to go quickly over your formula again. So the, the, the cost per, per acquisition, basically the cost per lead. Um, I think a great way for newsletters as well is, is to think of this as the subscriber lifetime value. So yeah, yeah. yeah what we see if people if if you have absolutely no idea what that is in your case a good range of kind of good rule of thumb on on newsletters is if you sell info products or products of some kind directly to your audience then that kind of um that lifetime value the subscriber lifetime value is probably going to be at least $20 it's likely to be higher than that um we see a lot of people in like the 30 to $70 range mm -hmm. if you run or if you, if you monetize mainly through sponsorships and ads then it's it's really more variable but you'd want it to be at least five dollars realistically over that lifetime and as yeah. obviously as your newsletter grows it's going to increase as well yeah. yeah so you so you take that um and and again that that was a like a really good example or like i mentioned before if you're let's say selling something Take, take my case, for example, um, if I'm selling a course for $500, I'm going to take that $500 uh, and then I'm going to take the conversion rate that typically happens from, let's say I send out uh, uh, an email to my email list about, hey, I opened up my, uh, my video course, here's the course, and then I'm going to see like what's the conversion rate from that audience. So at what rate they convert from being a free subscriber to purchasing a product, going to take that conversion rate and then just, um, do the, um, my, uh, course. So the cost of my course that, which is $400 times the conversion rate, and I'm going to end up with a max cost per lead. Um, I also have, if, if anyone is interested in a more of a detailed explanation, I also have uh, a free lesson, um, that I, uh, essentially use for, uh, advertising, um, a free lesson from my course about that very topic. Uh, cause I know that this is a, this is a slightly larger topic. So, um, if anyone's interested, they can either email me or Louis, they can email you and I can send them the link to the uh, lesson. Yes. Awesome. Well, I think that's pretty much it. I think we went through most of the questions there. Um, was definitely everything I needed to know. Um, 
Moita, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for doing this. It's been really great. And um, yeah, I hope you ride out the rest of the lockdown safe and sound and uh, hope to have you back very soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Thanks everyone for joining. Bye-bye.